Alright guys, I am back with my review of the Ring of Honor Best in the World 2013 pay-per-view. Um, just got done watching the show. Um, I think pretty much everybody knows that once again the show was just plagued with streaming issues. The first half of the show was damn near unwatchable for me. Um, it just kept buffering the entire time. And during intermission I went to the Ring of Honor Facebook page and someone posted that if you go back about 10 minutes it'll allow the video to buffer and it won't do the whole lagging thing um, so I did that and it did stop the buffering problems where it wasn't buffering every two minutes quality was still shit at times but it still uh, it wasn't as bad as the buffering um, every two minutes and then it still cut out a lot of stuff on the show I don't know what the hell was going on the entire finish to the triple threat for the TV title, no clue what happened. Nobody knows what happened except the people who were there. Um, so that was a huge problem. Um, and believe it or not, this isn't even the worst. I've had shows I've paid for I couldn't watch at all. It was just a black screen. So this is not even the worst streaming issue they've had. Uh, but yeah, I've watched every Ring of Honor show since Final Battle 2011. I've bought every pay-per-view they've put out and all this shit started with that Go Fight Live show, Showdown in the Sun. And ever since, it's always something. They've had a few good shows, but I feel like there's been way more shows with streaming issues than just good shows that have ran perfectly. Um, so anyways, I just want to go ahead and get the streaming thing out of the way. The first few matches, I think the first four matches before intermission, I didn't get to really sit and watch the matches, so I can't really say anything about them. I know what the finishes were. I got to see that um, a lot of times only because they had replays, but yeah, I can't really say this was a great match, this was a bad match or anything like that, and honestly, I thought about just waiting because normally if this happens, I'll wait until it's up on demand. I can watch it again and then do the review, and then this time I just said, fuck it. I'm not going to wait and watch this again on demand and waste more of my time. So I know what happens. The first four matches, I'm just going to basically give some results here. A few things I did get to see. And then the second half of the show, I did get to watch. Um, minus when it cut out and just went black. I know, this sounds fucking insane. Why do I continue to pay for this shit? So anyways, Kevin Kelly and Steve Carino were on commentary. It looked like this was in the Dewburns Arena, and it looked like they changed the entrance to the ring a little bit too, which uh, was a good idea. Made it look better for the pay per view. First match is Bennett versus Whitmer. Maria tries to say something on commentary. I couldn't make it out. Um, Brutal Bob runs in. BJ throws him out. Hits the exploder for the win. Afterwards, Maria blames Brutal Bob for Bennett losing. And Carino says that's why we don't have any women in scum. So I don't know what they're doing with this brutal Bob Maria Bennett thing, but um, that's really all I know that happened. <laughs> Out of the entire match, that's really all I can remember is the finish, and that was because of the replay. I missed this entire match and just kept buffering. Uh, anyways, I'm not going to talk about that anymore. So American Wolves versus ACH and Tadarius Thomas. ACH goes for the 450. Davy gets the knees up, rolls up ACH for the win. Um, probably was a good match. And afterwards, Davy Richards says something to Red Dragon about how he's going to come after the American Wolves are going to come after the tag titles, which I thought was kind of a spoiler. <laughs> and Red Dragon does end up retaining. They show some clips of Adam Cole refusing to shake hands with Roderick Strong that happened on a show a few weeks ago. And this was, uh, this was something between these two where Cole refused to shake hands and then he came out and changed his mind or something. I'm not really sure. Uh, but if they had something like this to help build the match, why didn't they show it on television? Oh, so let me see if I'm uh, missing anything here. Then we get Roderick Strong versus Adam Cole. Um, and watching this match here... I was, I was actually thinking it would be nice for Roderick Strong to actually join up with Scum just because he already is a heel 
And a lot of these guys like Jimmy Rave and Rhino aren't on all the shows, but someone like Roderick Strong is. So it would be nice if they have someone like him join up with Scum to kind of help them. Um, and then I was thinking it would also be awesome for Michael Elgin to join because that would be a huge surprise. And he was a heel before, but he's got this big babyface run, and Elgin would be a big surprise to end up joining Scum, I think. Um, but Adam Cole super kicks Roderick Strong on the apron. He goes through a table. Cole tries to help Roderick up. The ref's counting. And then Cole just drops him and runs back in the ring. Wins by count out. He's got this sick grin on his face. And I thought this was pretty good. And Steve Carino follows Adam Cole to the back and he's cheering him on. He's going to try and recruit him for scum. Adam Cole at this point would be obvious if he joined. So it would be nice to have a surprise member. So Carino's gone, and Veda Scott comes out to, I guess, hype her match with Mischief for the TV taping tomorrow. And then R.D. Evans comes out, so Kevin Kelly sends poor Veda Scott to the back. She looks confused, doesn't know what the hell's going on. I don't know what the hell's going on. It was cutting back and forth, so I thought this was kind of strange, but R.D. Evans comes out to do commentary for the Elgin vs. Ciampa match. He says that the tag team of QT Marshall and R.D. Evans is now called Marshall Law. My God. <laughs> Ciampa holds Elgin up for the vertical suplex. Elgin hits a buckle bomb against the barricade. He tries to deadlift suplex Ciampa into the ring, but Ciampa escapes. Hits Project Ciampa on Elgin, but he gets the ropes. Ciampa hits White Noise on the apron. Elgin hits the buckle bomb. And the spinning power bomb, but Ciampa kicks out and turns into a chokehold. Elgin tries to power out and hits another buckle bomb. They go back and forth. Elgin eventually hits three spinning back fists, an elbow to the back of the head, and a clothesline for the win. This was a really good match here. Crowd was behind both guys. Afterwards, QT Marshall comes out, and I have no idea what happened next. I know he's supposed to have a match with Tomasa Ciampa, so I assume he did something to him. During intermission, we see Elgin, Nigel, Roderick, and Jay Lethal give their thoughts on who they think is going to win between the Briscoe brothers. They show some of the Briscoes' first match together um, with them talking about the first match, and Jay Briscoe acts like he doesn't remember who won because uh, it was Mark, which was pretty funny. Um, then we get Nigel, who comes out on er, to do commentary for the rest of the show. Taven versus Lethal versus Jacobs for the TV title. The new Hoopla Hottie is Silesia. Lethal pulls down Taven's tights, and Taven, instead of pulling them up, he just smiles and leaves his ass hanging out. I have never seen this before. But Jacobs goes for sliced bread on Lethal. Lethal throws him to the outside, which was a pretty sick bump. Scarlet gets in the ring and slaps Lethal. He rips her top off. She was facing the other way, so it's not like you could see her breast or anything, but the people in the crowd could. Um, so he rips her top off, and the truth runs in and gets in Lethal's face, and Jacobs spears him, spears Lethal, and then Jacobs gets in Truth's face, and Silesia gets between Truth and Jacobs, and Jacobs just pushes her to the side, and she grabs Jacobs, picks him up like she's going to hit White Noise, Jay Lethal runs in, hits a super kick on Silesia, and it looked like Jacobs goes for the diamond cutter on Jay Lethal, and then the stream just completely cut out, and it shows that Matt Taven retained the title somehow. Nobody knows how. In fact, I looked it up on Wikipedia, and it says Jimmy Jacobs won, which is wrong. Matt Taven won the match, but nobody knows what the hell happened here. Um, all I know is there was so much going on in the finish of this match that the referee had to notice it. It was just so ridiculous that all of this stuff was taking place in the ring and the referee just kept getting distracted by stuff. CNC versus Red Dragon versus Titus and Compton. Cedric kills himself taking a bump on the apron here. Uh, Caprice and Cedric hit overtime on O'Reilly. Compton and Titus pull him out. Caprice dives on him from the top to the outside. Cedric hits a brain buster on O'Reilly. Bobby Fish runs in, kicks Cedric in the head. Lays O'Reilly on top of him. Red Dragon retains the tag titles here. This was a pretty short match for a triple threat tag team match. 
Um, and the show was running a little long at this point. It ended up being about three and a half hours. So it was running a little long, but I guess they just decided they were going to cut some of this match short. Kevin Steen versus Matt Hardy. Carino comes out and cuts an awesome promo saying Hardy is the most beautiful man to ever step foot in this ring. And Steen expects Scum to get involved, so he asks Nigel to make it no DQ, and Nigel agrees. Steen asks Matt if his brother's the one with the balls in the family, so Hardy goes after him. Carino brings Hardy a trash can, and they do some spots with this. Steen sets up a table, and Rhett Titus comes out. Steen hits the package pile driver on him, and Hardy hits two side effects on Steen, but Steen recovers and tries to put Hardy through the table again. Jimmy Jacobs runs out. He moves the table. Steen power bombs him on the apron, and then Compton runs out and hits Steen with a chair. Hardy uses a ladder on Steen, but Steen hits him with a code breaker while he's holding the ladder, and he hits the F5, but Hardy kicks out. Hardy low blows Steen and hits a side effect on the ladder, but Steen kicks out, and Hardy sets up two chairs, hits the twist of fate between the chairs for the win. Um, so Matt Hardy goes over here. I thought it was a decent match. Uh, it could have been better. Once again, it was probably some of the cuts that uh, screwed this one up, but I still thought it was a decent match. Scum comes out and beats down Steen afterwards, and Matt Hardy is just smiling. He's so excited he won the match. We see Larry Legend, of all people, in the crowd talking to the Briscoe family. And Jay versus Mark for the world title. This was a great match here. These guys did a really good job. Um, this was one that was really hurt by the cuts being made. Uh, it just it really pissed me off that it would just skip around the entire time. But Mark tries his redneck kung fu and... Jay counters with his boxing, which was pretty badass. And Kevin Kelly says that they were both stretching backstage to prepare for this match, and Mark was doing yoga. And I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Mark Briscoe was doing yoga? That's a really weird thing to picture him doing. Jay goes for a table on the outside, and Mark actually goes out to help him set up the table, which was really cool. I've never seen that before. So they set up the table, and I actually missed the table spot because of the cuts. Uh, that really pissed me off, but I think he hit a froggy bow off the top through the table, but yeah, I couldn't see it. So Mark uses the same move he beat Jay with in their first match, but Jay kicks out. I thought that was a really nice touch. Um, Jay hits the Jay Driller, but Mark kicks out. He hits another one. Mark gets up at one. And then he hits a third Jay Driller for the win. Um, afterwards, both guys are just laid out. Jay Briscoe retains the world title, and the family comes in to check on both guys. Um, that's how the show ended. So I honestly have to say this was probably a good pay-per-view if, if I could have actually watched it because I was entertained um, the entire time. And it was, like I said, three and a half hours long. So um, that says a lot right there. But if I could have watched the first half at all, it probably would have been a much better show. And then the second half had the damn cuts. So it was like, holy shit, man. What is up with these streams? Why is this so difficult? I really don't get it. But, yeah, from what I got to see, I do think this will probably be a good pay-per-view on DVD or something like that. But, um, yeah, I can't. I can't make any excuses for the stream. That was just absolute shit and uh, a huge disappointment to me. But anyways, that's my review of Best in the World 2013. Hope you guys liked the video. Leave your thoughts in the show in the comments and thanks for watching.